So is it possible to start a new blog that you know nothing about in that topic? Hmm. Well, let's dive right in. I'm going to teach you how you can start a blog with a brand new niche that you know nothing, nothing about, but you can still make money, right? I'll show you all the steps in the process to help you if you want to. Now, why would you want to start a new blog with nothing you know about? Like, for example, I want to start a blog about pool maintenance. I know nothing about pool maintenance, or I want to start a blog about website maintenance. I don't know anything about website maintenance, or I want to start a blog about barbecuing. I know nothing about barbecuing, right? Like, how do you know this? What do you do? How do you figure this out? Oh my goodness. Well, let's go through this process because it is possible. Like, I wouldn't pick a blog niche that you know, like, absolutely nothing, and it's like super hard. Like, it's, you know, chemistry or like something like niche that you just have no idea and it's not really lifestyle based because with lifestyle based content you can get away with not knowing it if it's more educational it'll be harder so like you know off-roading stuff and like archery and hunting i could start a blog about hunting because that is not in the realm with with my world at all but i've watched some shows about this stuff i'm aware of youtube channels that talk about this stuff and i can leverage that information to help me with a new blog find some affiliates for that those products in that new niche and then use some tools to help me write the content if i'm not familiar with it now i do have a lot of freelance clients and for the most part they ask me to write content that i'm familiar with but every now and then I get asked to write about something that I'm not familiar with and I still have to fulfill that job. I still want to get paid. So, so with that, I mean, I have to do a lot of deep dive research, but when you want to start an actual blog, you do need a bit more than just research. So let's go through this process to help you. If you are interested in starting like a new niche that you really don't know nothing about. How would you go about that? You know, the first thing that I would look for are the keywords. If there are actual keywords that are rankable that you can rank for, if you find a topic and all the keywords are highly difficult to rank for, then I wouldn't start that type of blog. I do use in the moment Ahrefs, but you can use your SEO tool if you have one. So for example, this is Ahrefs. Now Ahrefs does have a free keyword generator that you can get started with, but they don't give you a lot of keywords to look for. But if I wanted to do something on like pool maintenance, I can see if it's something difficult to rank for. Now just that term alone doesn't look like it's too hard to rank for. It looks like, you know, there's a lot of volatility. This shows me the movement of sites going up and down. And I can sort of see the type of content and blogs here, how popular or strong their domain is. And it looks a little competitive here, but I do see some hope down at the bottom of sites that are fairly newer right here. So I can definitely, you know, again, check that out. I can look at other keywords, so here's pool chemicals for dummies. I can look at that keyword. It looks super easy to rank for. Good enough people searching for it. And again, just look and see, oh, here's a lower domain site, a lower domain site. Here's another keyword, pool treatment. I can definitely look a little bit harder to rank for. I can do maybe this one. Oh, that's super easy. Treatment pool room safe. It's not grammatically correct. I can see, this looks like it's for Resident Evil. It's for a, a video game. So maybe that wouldn't be the greatest to rank for if you're doing pool treatment. But this one looks like a better keyword. It's easier to rank for, gets more search volume. And, but it looks like the blogs that are ranking for them are pretty high domain authority. Again, looking at other keywords, and it's just going like this to see if I'm getting a feel for this. I do see some potential for certain uh, keywords here that I could rank for if I was a new blog, right? Because with new blogs, your uh, domain rating or authority to Google is very low, right? So for the first year, your domain rating might be, might go as high as like an eight or nine. If you actually put a lot of effort in, you can raise your domain rating to, you know, in the twenties, but it does take a lot of effort. And the biggest way to do that is to, you know, get those backlinks and with backlinks, other sites are linking to your 
resource posts your posts. I do talk about that in Ready, Set, Blog with Traffic. I give you lots of different methods for backlinking that are appropriate for bloggers. Um, so you can check that out if you want for that specific method. But that's how you would make your blog stronger. And when you start ranking for terms that you can rank for, then other sites will hopefully find you and and link to you, right? But in the beginning with any kind of new niche, you do need to find some keywords that you are able to rank for. And then the next step is to look at the competitors. Look at see those blogs that have a lower domain authority that are closer to you as a brand new blogger and seeing what they provide. I did click on one. So here is a pool operation management, and then you can sort of just see how they're structured, how long the posts start, not that long. Look at recent posts. This is just called pool hacks. So, I mean, it doesn't even look like they have a strong SEO strategy. Some posts look like they're SEO, other ones don't. So yeah, you can definitely just get a feel of like, okay, this is a long title. This must be a, a keyword here. When should I close my pool is probably a keyword. So you can just look at all of that and see, well, it's pretty short. Since it's ranking for those somewhat competitive keywords with this type of content, you know, as a new blogger, I would think, hmm, if I'm a little bit more elaborate on my content, if I add more personal elements to my content, maybe I have a pool, I can add more unique photos in my content, then that can help me with showing more value versus this blog post, right? So you gotta think a little bit like that when you are starting a new niche in a topic that you're not familiar with. Like I am not familiar with pool maintenance. I do not have a pool, so, but I have friends who have a pool. And so I can definitely ask them to take pictures of their pool if, and let them know that I'm using it for a blog post. You know, like I'm aware of all of that. I can ask my friends about their pool and their maintenance and seeing what's all about and get maybe firsthand knowledge. There's lots of different ways that I can do to make sure that my content looks like it's from a credible source when it's not, when I don't know nothing about it kind of thing. But I would definitely leverage keywords to find keywords if I can rank for it. Looks like there is some potential. Spend the time finding the right keywords and then looking at the competitors not just the one that I have here, but several different ones to see what the regular content length is, what kind of pictures they're using, what are they addressing? How are they writing it? Is it more business related? It's not tailored to a family. Maybe you can stand out that way, all right? So this is all like the preliminary research you would do before you dive into starting a blog about nothing you know about. That's definitely the first two steps. And then in the next step, I would look to see how were they making money? Obviously, a lot of these pool maintenance people have their own service. So they are they want people to come and hire them for their services. So you can definitely look and see about other content to see, well, how are they making money? So if we look at, let's see, different companies here, different blogs. So they sell products here. So this blog sells products. So even though it's more like liners and covers, you know, for your blog, it might be more educational content, educational guides, things like that. This one sells courses. So this one decides to do courses. So there you go. Pool Care Handbook, video course, lots of different types of video courses and course bundles and things like that. So you can see there's lots of different ways. I haven't looked at ads. Ads is another viable method to make money if your content is getting a ton of traffic then why not slap some ads on your site, right? And make that extra 500 to a thousand dollars a month kind of thing on ads alone. So you do see here that there is courses. I'm sure there's affiliate marketing and selling their own products. Lots of potential in just this one niche that I know nothing about. <laughs> so after you've done sort of that research and it might take you some time, you know, use a Google doc or Google sheet to track all this information down to find the best niche for you regarding the keywords that you can rank for regarding the competitors and what they're doing to make money. And then from that, then you can have the assurance of like, you know what, I really do want to start this type of blog. I have a lot of ideas now. 
I know where my path is and how to get the traffic because of these keywords. And then a marketing on Pinterest or on Facebook or wherever else you want to on social media. I think you should leverage social media. I do have a video on using Pinterest for traffic, so check that out. But yeah, get the get the blog on Pinterest to get that residual traffic first in the beginning. And then from there, I would develop a content schedule. Now with a content schedule, you do want to plan out your keywords and what you're going to write about, right? So based on what you've noticed. So with like Ahrefs, I mean, it's pool chemicals for dummies. You can look and see how people are terming their things. Three ways to properly maintain swimming pool, water, chemistry, pool chemicals for dummies, guide to pool chemicals, swimming pool, chemistry 101. So they're using 101 for beginners. So you can definitely just do something like when you decide on this term, you can do swimming pool chemicals for beginners 101. You can do something like that. This one just put four dummies at the end. You can make it a list post. This list post is number nine. So it doesn't look like this is really a list post search result. So I would definitely do more like headlines that don't have a number like that, right? So that could be, you know, based on these terms and what people are using for keywords, you for titles, you can create similar content. I do have a, a video actually on how to create an SEO headline. So you can you look at that video too, but I would get a list of probably 10 to 20 blog posts that are all keyworded. And then the next step would be to use something like an AI writer. You can use something like Jasper. You can use something like ChatGPT and you can have it help you write content. So with ChatGPT, you can see So I basically just was like, you know, write a blog outline for pool chemicals for dummies. This is for people with a brand new pool that know nothing about pool chemicals, make it easy, an easy outline. That's not too, not in depth and that's not in depth. And so it's just going to give me a blog outline. You can definitely use the uh, title that ChatGPT gave you too. And there you go. For something that I know nothing about, it's giving me all this stuff. Perfect. Now, what I would suggest is having the introduction and then going into um, a quick types of pool chemicals, like maybe in a, in a chart, and then going right into the basic steps, okay? So this should be in the top part of your post since this is about having a safe and clean pool. They want to know the steps. So the types, the steps, and then after that, you can do something like the importance of balancing your pool, the tools that you need it can also be a graph too. And then the frequently asked questions. So I would, I would term it that way just so that you can get the answer of what a certain a person wants right away. They probably do want to learn a bit about the chemicals. So you can put that up front, you can put it in a graph to make it easy for them to see what it's all about, write a couple sentences about what they need, and then maybe have affiliate links and then go into the steps. And maybe in the steps you can incorporate balancing your pool as one of the steps, like sort of before you do this, you need to balance your pool. This is how you do it. And then you go into the steps, right? So you can definitely have your own type of template to go about that and then use ChatGPT or Jasper to write the content for it to help you write the content. And you can just do a, something like this in the introduction. So I just said in the introduction of these points, elaborate on them and use the tone of voice of a mom with a new pool. So I gave them the two, I gave ChatGPT the two points of a brief overview of why pool chemicals are essential right here. And then assurance that maintaining a pool's chemical balance is not as complicated, even though they put it as like these things, I would then just pick and choose. You know, you've got that sparkling pool set up in the backyard. I bet the kids are itching to dive in and then go into these things here. You know, the introduction, this might be like a, like a briefer introduction. So I would sort of like uh, rewrite into two sentences. Okay. So the two sentences is an introduction. And then this one rewrite into two sentences. So you got a brand new pool in the backyard, just like me when I first got my pool, you're probably excited, but wondering how to keep it clean and safe. Trust me, pool chemicals are simpler than they sound and they're essential for preventing things like bacteria and algae. If you're feeling overwhelmed by the thought of pool chemicals and balancing levels, don't worry. It's simpler than it sounds. Think of this as following a recipe, but blend those two together and make a nice little introduction that incorporates like this pool chemicals for dummies kind of thing keyword. Now using chat GPT can be a little bit 
laborious this way you're going back and forth rewriting things like that i like jasper jasper does a good job with writing the content i can do an all-in-one blog post and then from there have it elaborate so we can check that out too so with jasper you can just go to create content you can use a template and then you can go to blog and do the one shot blog post and you can go to chat gpt to get the title do that woman encouraging and fun new pool owners and then create the content so it gives you the introduction the three main chemicals you need for the pool using chlorine maintaining your balance so again what ChatGPT gave me using more chemicals here and then the conclusion so again an easy blog post that you can incorporate some of these elements into what ChatGPT gave you so you can use both of them you can elaborate on some of them you can add some more so that it talks about that in the paragraph template you can just say talk about this chemical and all that and then go from there so whatever ai writing tool you would use you would just use that one elaborate and come up with a nice blog post Definitely cross-reference it with what's already ranking to make sure that you're covering all the topics and points and that you're on the right track. And then I would do like a little bit of outreach to get some people that are experienced. It could be other people in your neighborhood that have a pool. You can maybe add a quote or someone that's like online that is an expert with pool maintenance, maybe a YouTube channel that has someone that talks about pool maintenance then maybe they have a blog and you can contact them. There's lots of different ways you can get some expert quotes into your content because that will always help show that your content is valid and um, it's backed up by people who know what they're talking about. But I hope that helped you. If you are thinking about starting a blog about a topic that you really don't know nothing about, I would leverage AI to help you with just getting that. And over time, I can assure you that you will know more about your niche. Now, even though I do cleaning and organizing all the time as a mom, my niche site on cleaning and organizing, I still find some new things that I knew nothing about. Certain new trends, new paint colors, new organizers, all these things that I knew nothing about. But because I look at Pinterest, because I asked Jasper or ChatGPT uh, for some ideas, I'm learning about my niche more and more, and I'm more confident to write blog content without the help of AI. That's what I feel once you start a niche that you know nothing about. And then the more content that you publish, the more traffic you'll get. And then you can start placing ads. You can already start doing affiliate marketing with more people coming to your blog. And then eventually, if you want to do some courses, some templates, things like that to start monetizing your blog. So hopefully that helped you. Go ahead and already enroll in my free course to start a blog and tell me in the comments below if you are a serial blogger like me that you have more than one blog. I'd love to know what your plan is and, and if you're starting any new blogs this year or, or you're planning to soon in a niche that you know nothing about. That'd be kind of cool. All right, I'll see you in the next video.